Noble ones, what a pleasure. Thank you so much for stopping by. Let's jump right into it. We all love the figure of the medieval knight, whether it be video games or movies, whether it be a historical setting or fantasy, the knight is omnipresent. Now, it can be dark fantasy, it can be high fantasy, it could be an epic royal knight, or it could be a chaos warrior, chaos knight or a dark knight, it doesn't matter, the knight is always there. But why? Well, the reason is actually quite simple. They are the apex of medieval society. They are very well-off men and this economic power that they had allowed them to do two very important things that allowed them to be incredibly successful in combat. Number one, they had a lot of free time and they could use that to train. But number two, the economic power, the money that they had allowed them to buy the best weapons and armor that medieval technology could offer. Now, armor is where we're going to focus now. The armor not only makes the knight super cool to look at, and that's why they, when they appear, you know, we, we all, we are all amazed by the glittering and shining armor when we see it, whether it be movies or films, but it also makes them really, really tough to kill. And this leads us to the real question of this video. Understanding the knight is really tough to kill because of his armor, why not just killing the horse? Well, let me give you three reasons why, if you were a medieval soldier, you wouldn't. So we've all gathered so far that killing a medieval knight, big problem. He was fit, he was trained, he was very well equipped, a nightmare for any medieval soldier to face one of those. So of course killing the knight's horse might sound like the best, easiest option out. And yet the first reason why you probably wouldn't is because most likely you couldn't. It's interesting how many people I read in forums just make it sound like a walk in the park, like a piece of cake. They're like, oh well, I'll just dodge the knight as he's charging me and I'll slice and dice the horse with my sword in the meantime, you know, so the horse drops dead, the knight falls on the ground and then I just go there, stand over him and just kill him, you know, whatever, open the helmet and kill him. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's first begin with swords, maces, warhammers, sort of close range combat weapons. With these, you don't really stand much of a chance of doing that. For you to be able to effectively pull that move off against the knight, you have to consider one thing, range. The knight has a huge range advantage over you because he's wielding a lance. So a lot of people don't understand that the knight doesn't really need to come in contact with you with his horse, okay? Because the lance will arrive before that because he's got huge range advantage. It, as I said, if you have maces, you have swords, if you have any kind of weapon that is not a pole weapon, he has a range advantage. So not only you would have to dodge the weapon first, successfully not easy again because he can redirect it and again he has been trained his entire life to do that while most likely if you're just a common infantryman you haven't but but another thing is that you need to dodge the weapon then you need to dodge the, the horse coming at you and then you need to also manage to cut him properly either manage to cut and incapacitate the animal because you, you cut so deep to actually get the some of the vital organs or maybe you just need to be able to cut the legs of the horse moving legs of a moving horse so deeply that the horse drops on the ground because again a horse is a big animal so killing it in one strike it requires surgical precision and again all of this without being hit and then the knight is on the ground and whatever because otherwise any light wound would only wound the animal but the, it wouldn't just drop dead just because you slice through it. Interestingly enough you need to be able to do all of this in the very last split second because again if you do it too quickly if you do it too early the knight can redirect the horse so if you start dodging too soon he can just redirect and catch and catch you so <laughs> you need to again dr dr impossible. So here you are, medieval grunt. You have been called to serve in your lord's army for this very important campaign. You know, he needs you to conquer some new territories because he needs them. Given he already owns half of the British Isles, well you don't even own the backyard of your home, but hey. So a few months pass by and there you are. You've been deployed on the soon to become battlefield. The archers are on the top of the hill, nicely guarded by wooden palisade. But you... You're an infantry man, and you've been chosen to be in the first line. It's a cold and miserable day. Your feet hurt like heaven and hell put together, but don't say that in front of the priest, or they will burn you at the stake, mate. Just don't. 
There you are, wrapped up in your padded jack, which is pretty nice. And you're also wearing your father's helmet, which, I mean, doesn't really fit, but that's all you could afford. You've been waiting for a few hours, waiting for the command to move, and there you hear it. The sound. The sound. Hoofs smashing cobbles. And you don't even need to look to the side. You can just feel them. You can just feel the resplendent armor, the proud countenance, the knights are coming our way. Remember your training, right? I mean, you have been trained for four weeks. The specific knight who has chosen you as his target, well, he has been training since he was seven. While you were walking around town, he was training the sword. While you were working the fields, he was training the sword. While you were drinking in the tavern, he was training the sword. And actually, more importantly, the lance, the mace, the bullhammer, and many other weapons. But the sword sounds cool, so we keep saying that. While you were having sex with Jennifer for the first time, he was training the sword and having sex with a lot more girls you ever will. And that number probably includes Jennifer as well. Unless he's a Templar, of course. If he sticks to the rule, that is. If he... Where is this conversation going? So what if you were an archer? Well, this is already a better situation because you've got range advantage now over the night. But again, don't make it sound too easy. People make it sound too easy. The knight is a moving target and a fast one at that. And you can't really start shooting the knight from too far away. And we know this, it's backed up by actual medieval iconographic evidence that the archers didn't shoot from too far of range. Because that if you shoot from too far, again, it becomes a lot harder to hit the moving target from too far of a distance. You really almost stand no chance to hit him unless you're like Robin Hood. Secondly, the arrow loses penetrative power. And again, if you want to really kill the horse, you need a lot of penetration and a lot of precision. So the idea of I'm going to hit the horse in the center of the forehead from safe distance while it's moving and charging at me, uh, probably not. Probably not. So again, you need to shoot at point blank. And keep in mind you don't have unlimited ammo, so you don't want to waste your arrows. So let's imagine this for a second. You're an archer and you're using a medieval war bow, so these require a lot of strength. Okay, so you're a strong man and you're aiming the knight, it's a bit too far, let's try it. Oh gosh, I missed it. Okay, so let's take it again, second arrow, the knight is coming in this way. And there you are, you're aiming and uh, you might, I might hit him now. Oh gosh, the wind, flipping egg, the wind just, oh, let me get another, boom, dead. So unless you have a sort of a situation similar to like the Battle of Agincourt where they managed to make the cavalry charge ineffective because of the way they were organized. The archers were on top of a hill, the, the ground was muddy, it had rained before, they've got palisade in front of it. So you need a specific situation to make archers shooting horses a viable option. If you just you can't just pull it pull that one off either in any battlefield because it's gonna be harder that you think than you think and if you miss again he's over you what if you have got pearl weapons well that again is a good option and we do know that pikemen infantry were effective against horses although we do need to understand one thing in films movies and video games one thing that I notice happen a lot is that the knights are charging often using swords for whatever reason while well, they should be using lances but anyways the, the knights are charging and then the soldiers they just place the pike and they w or, or the spear and they wait for the knights to come and what happens in these films often is that the knights commit suicide so the horses literally impale themselves inside the, the spears even though it's quite obvious that the infantry is waiting for them like that. Now, something like this, absolutely not. So I'm not saying the pikes wouldn't work, they would, but what they manage to do, spearmen and pikemen, is that they make the cavalry charge ineffective because the charge fails. It just doesn't happen. So if the knights are coming towards you and the guys are all very disciplined, and we'll get back to discipline in a moment, if the guys are very disciplined and they manage to stand the line with their pikes, regardless of the fact that the knights are coming and they don't run away, if that happens, then the, basically the horses refuse to charge. Because the horse is not a bike, it's not a tank, it's an animal, it's a living being, and they don't want to commit suicide. Okay? If you try, if you tell a horse to jump into a ravine, the, the horse just, just tells you, 
you jump it, which in horse language is eh, and it just, you know, it just stops. It doesn't jump into a ravine, it doesn't kill itself. And it's a similar situation with a pike. The animal recognizes the weapon as a threat and it doesn't just impale itself like in the movies, like it's, it seems like they're frigging blind. They don't. So the animal just stops. Now, so the pike is good at preventing the knights from charging you and that's why much will depend on the tactics. For example, the infantry uh, is keeping the pikemen busy and the knights charge from the rear or the knights charge from the side that is a very very effective situation but you know char uh, knights charging at the front of a of a line of spearmen it's very difficult to make it happen if the pikemen are very well trained and this will lead us to point number two reason number two discipline well, lack of discipline in medieval armies was a problem. And we do know that, yes, pikemen uh, corps became very, very efficient, but that's after they became very, very professional and people were trained very, very well. Because even if you've got a, a solid line of pikemen or a solid line of swordsmen, heavy infantry with shields, it is very difficult to make sure they don't run away when the knights charge. So much has to do with the game of chicken, if you will. So when the knights are coming, coming towards you, lots of soldiers will break the lines. You know, imagine that you're an infantryman and you're there, you're in the line and you're like, okay, I just got to stand there, I got to stand firm and Tom as well, hold on a minute, where, where, where is Tom? Oh gosh, Tom ran away. So hold on a minute, and that, now we don't have a line. Oh gosh, Michael ran away as well. Oh, I'll, I'll run away as well. And when you do that, then you're dead because the knights will find a broken line of men who are just trying to run away and of course they can, they are faster and they'll just start impaling everyone and that's going to be a disaster and it did happen a lot so it is much will depend on discipline so now the reason why you wouldn't kill the, the horse of a knight is because most likely if you were a medieval soldier and an untrained one of that you will run away you will have morale problems because it takes a lot of discipline and a lot of cohesion and professionalism to stand there and wait for the knights to come until the right moment to counter-attack with any weapon you've got most likely a pike so before getting to reason number three, I'd like to give you a little bit of perspective now, perhaps in a little bit of a funny way. You will now become a medieval grant. All right, lads, are you ready for training? Tomorrow we are going to battle. Excuse me, sir. I've got a question if you don't mind. Speak up your mind, soldier. What do we do if the knights charge us? No worries. I got you covered, son. We have considered that option. Okay, so listen up. If the knights charge you, all you gotta do, you just focus and you stand the line. No, 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 seriously. You can trust me, lads. You just man up and stand the line. It's been tested and all. It's all written in this book that you can't read. Okay, listen, the priest, the monk, he can read anything, literally. I've seen him once reading a whole book in Roman. I didn't even understand it like it was nothing. And he's read this book, he said it's legit, so it's written in here, you just stand the line. Do what? And reason number three, dehumanizing warfare. Now, this is the most psychological aspect of our discussion today, but oftentimes when we imagine ourselves in the Middle Ages or whatever age fighting in a, in a combat situation, we often make it a lot easier than it is because we dehumanize it. We just imagine, hey, if I were there, I would just dodge, do this, do that, sl sl slit his throat and, and whatnot. But it's not easy to kill someone in fact, this was a huge problem in First World War and Second World War. A lot of soldiers, when they were ordered to shoot at the enemy, they just either wouldn't or they would just shoot above them. It's not easy to kill, even if you're trying to defend yourself, and in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and there is so much psychological stress, distress, in a life-to-death combat scenario that it's not easy to predict what you will actually do in that situation. It could be that you are either a very well-disciplined, well-trained and skilled individual who actually does manage to be effective in combat and also, you know, 
you know, increases kill count, or maybe you're just a freaking murderer, and and you just you know for you just taking lives is not a problem. But both these situations are very very um, small percentages. You do have to consider the masses, and for the masses, it's difficult to kill, and it's difficult to be effective in combat, and it's difficult to keep your sh together in these situations. So again, if you were a medieval soldier and you are being charged by the knights and you know that that's basically the most terrible situation that you could find yourself in in medieval times because the knights are like the most effective thing you could think it doesn't mean that they are invincible of course they were destroyed and of course a lot of people would write down now examples in the comments below of hey in this battle the, the, the infantry destroyed the knights i know for example if we look at the spanish um, you know pike and shot fantastic organization and they did manage to beat the french knights but again pike and shot so with you know, early gunpowder. But even without gunpowder, yes, there were situations in which a knight were beat. But if we compare them with how many times cavalry was effective in ancient warfare and medieval warfare, then you will see that the percentage of you being such an effective infantryman who manages to overpower a knight, well, the percentage is very, very low. Okay, number one. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. I hope to see you again for my next video. I always appreciate your time and your comments. Thank you for liking this video if you have, and let me know what you think in the comments below. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.